This is a Pele Media Podcast. Welcome back to Goonies Minute, everybody. Goonies Minute is the fan podcast where we carefully explore the movie Goonies minute by minute. This is Brady. This is Chris. And we're here to bring you minute number 70. Today we are 70 minutes into this movie. Uh, Chris, how was uh, how was? And I wish I had 700 more minutes into oh, this movie. I tell you. That would be great. I tell you. St. Patrick's Day was a lot of fun. We saw beautiful floats. We saw mm-hmm. beautiful people. Some of the You talk about the floats. I mean, some of the people around here put a lot of effort into making their floats just... I mean, top notch. You talk about dis- having disposable income. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, a couple of years ago, I actually saw one of the floats that looked um, a lot like a like a really well done and detailed pirate ship, uh, which was kind of cool. Speaking of pirates, you want to get into the minute? Let's get into the minute. In the previous minute, the Goonies began to decode a riddle on the map. The riddle involved the skeleton key that they had found earlier. At minute seventy, Mikey moves Moss away from an alcove in the wall. He spots a few collections of stones within the alcove. As Brand, Steph, and Andy watch Mikey, Brand asks, why couldn't he have had a little sister instead of Mikey? We cut back to Mikey. He is trying to see which collection of stones the key will fit around. He finally finds it, and the key locks into place. The three goonies determine that the key must be turned west. Mikey turns the key west, and a contraption over the alcove locks his hand in. Data tries to help him, but it's too late. Mikey has set off a booby trap. Everyone spins around and sees a cannonball rolling down a set of tracks along the wall. And thus ends Minute 70 of The Goonies. So, like we were seeing in the last minute, The Goonies were uh, putting to use a lot of detective work. They were looking over the map, and the map was telling them, use the skeleton key, uh, and it was giving them directions, very vague directions, so they had to really kind of use deductive reasoning to figure out what it was trying to do. Mikey uses the skeleton key and finds the triple stones, the three stones that he's going to put through the eyes and the nose of the key, and turn it westward, and all of a sudden, there's a trap that comes around and locks his hand inside of the contraption, and he's screwed. And then all of a sudden, we see the Rube Goldberg system kick into effect. And there's it looks a, like a cannonball. It looks like a cannonball, kind of going over some tracks. Like a metal and, ball or something. Yeah. Like an ancient cannonball or something. That's right. Kind of going around the room and over their heads. Everybody starts freaking out, and we don't know what the heck's going to happen. You know, how they found these triple stones... They magically just pushed some moss away, and there they were. Yeah. That was kind of out of the blue, wasn't it? Uh-huh. It's out of the blue, and it's it's almost a little that bit... That was weird. It's a little too dramatic of a moment. Look like, at this, I, I mean, why would they... I mean, wh- wh- what would make them look at some moss? And then, oh, there it is. That's what I thought was going to happen. Yeah. That was kind of weird and contrived. It, you know, there could have been one more little thing on the map to give them the hint that it's on this part of the yeah. wall or something. Yeah, unless... unless th- <laughs> the foams meant the the moss, and I don't think that's what it was. I don't think so. No. You know, but, yeah, but that's a good point, though. That's but a, anyway, continue. Um, so Willie's map isn't just a map to the pirate ship and the treasure. It is something there to kill anyone who's looking for it. So why put a direction to the treasure if you're just trying to kill people with this map? Well, who's to say they are just trying to kill people? Maybe... They want to give people a chance. I mean, if they really wanted to kill some people, they could have done it to where there was no way out of some of these things, okay? They, they, if, if they wanted to kill somebody and just have fun doing it, no matter what keys were pressed on this this, or, this uh, organ a little bit later, they would all be wrong, and you would just die. So, do you so think obviously, Willie... Willie wants only the most deserving relentless, thoughtful person to be able to get his treasure. Yeah, and it takes the ultimate goonie, quote-unquote, the ultimate explorer or group of explorers to be able to get his treasure. So he wants to give people a chance, but the only he wants only the most worthy person to yeah. be able to get this treasure. That's what I was thinking. And someone that's going to respect the trap's and everything that he's put into this journey, only that person will be worthy of this treasure. And yeah. that's what I think Willie wanted. I think so. It's almost like an admiration thing. It's like if you can, in, in lack, for lack of a better way of putting it, outsmart me, 
uh, or at least match me, then you deserve this treasure. Exactly. Then that's what I. It. That's what I feel. Look, if they really want to get you, they're gonna. Get they you. can get you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's usually the game and everything involved with it that these people do. But if he wanted to really kill him, he would have. They they've been dead. Yeah, they've been dead. That's very interesting. And, uh, and and there would have been nothing they could do about it. Yeah. You know, it's so cool. One-Eyed Willie as a character is a skeleton. He's a dead person that we're not going to get to see but for a few seconds at the very end of the story. So how do you build up this pivotal character? How do you lay out this and display this oh-so-pivotal character? Arguably the most important character – not important, but pivotal character – in the whole movie. Well, there's no one-eyed Willie. There's no movie. There's no movie. There you go. All right. Uh, so how do you show this person except through his mental, uh, his um, cunning? And you do it through these booby traps. The more advanced the booby trap, the smarter the person you're you know, in this legend and everything. It's a really interesting uh, uh, predicament that they put themselves in as writers of the movie. And the way that they, they get out of that is uh, just expertly done. Of course, leave it to these filmmakers, this class of filmmaker to do that. So, yeah, okay, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in today. We will see you back here tomorrow for minute number 71, and until then, this is Brady. And this is Chris. And we're here to remind you that Goonies never, never say, say die. die. Goonies Minute is a fan-supported podcast. If you like the show, then leave us a review on iTunes. You can find us at GooniesMinute.com, Facebook.com slash Goonies Minute, Twitter.com slash Goonies Minute, and at Instagram at Goonies Minute. You can contact us at Goonies Minute at gmail.com. You've been listening to a Pele Media Podcast. For premium content and exclusive podcasts, visit us at Patreon.com slash Pele Media. Check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Pele Media, and follow us on Twitter at Twitter.com slash Pele Media.